In this video, I'm going to give you 15 tips on how to get started like a pro in Call of Dragons. G'day Legends, Immortal here. If you like Call of Dragons content, please like and subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified anytime I upload or go live. Let's start with the first tip. When you're just starting out, what you want to do is make sure that you're starting in a server that has only just begun. So the way that you can check the age of the server that you're currently in is you go to your profile picture, go to settings, click character management, and then create new character. Now you can see there that the current server is 14 days old trying to start in a server that's already 14 days old will be extremely difficult you're at a huge disadvantage now 14 days especially at the start is quite a lot of time in that time alliances will have already been set up and players will have already built a couple of million power what you could do if you find yourself in that situation is start an account in the current server, learn the basic mechanics of the game with the intention of starting fresh in the next server as soon as it starts. So once you've finished the tutorial, now I'm not gonna go through that, it's pretty self-explanatory, the game will tell you exactly what you need to do step by step. The very next thing you wanna do is join an alliance. Now the way you join an alliance is by pressing the button there on the right, then going across to the shield and then this screen comes up and press join. Now what you want to do is look for an alliance that states anyone can join, not one that needs approval. And you're looking for an alliance that has quite a few members in it. So I wouldn't join an alliance that has two or three. You're really looking for an alliance that has 30 plus at the start. Now this isn't going to be your forever home. This is just an alliance to get you started. When you join an alliance, you receive helps. A help request is sent after you've upgraded a building by pressing the green icon above it. Once it pings all of your alliance members, they then get the opportunity to hit their help button, which has just happened on screen now. And what that does is it reduces your build or research time by 1% and a minimum of one minute. This will really help your progression as you get started in a new server. Okay, I'll just scroll down here and try and find a suitable alliance. And there we go, 67 of 73, 18 million power, anyone can join. So let's join that. And what it'll ask you to do is, if it's in a different region, you'll need to relocate to that region. Now at the start, you get five relocation tokens. So it's not a big deal just to use one for this and then one to get back. Okay, the next tip, is to unlock the second build queue. Now you can get to that by clicking on a building and then pressing upgrade. And then once you get to this screen, you can hire one with a contract. You get one of those when you first start, or you can unlock permanently with 5,000 gems or buying the bundle. Now, if you run out of contracts and you haven't permanently unlocked the second build queue, you can still purchase the second build queue at 150 gems for every two days. Okay, once you upgrade your hall to level four, that's Hall of Order, Wilder Hall, or Sacred Hall, depending on your faction, you then get access to the Alliance Center, which is pictured on your screen now, or the Research Building. Once you place those buildings, I recommend that you upgrade those both to the highest level allowable by your current hall. A lot of people will recommend that you should only upgrade the required buildings to increase the level of your hall. And while I agree with that somewhat, I do believe that these two buildings are the exception. These two buildings I upgrade first. As soon as I've upgraded my hall, I start with the Alliance Center first, and then the Academy building, either College of Order, Sears Council, or School of Sages depending on what faction you are. Now, if you take a look inside the information, you'll see that at level one, your help chances available are five. And now they increase every level all the way up to level 25, which gives you 30 help chances. Each help reduces your build time or research time by 1% or a minimum of one minute. Now you can see how quickly that will add up over the life of your account. At the highest level, level 25, that is a 30% reduction in build time or research time. Now both of these buildings have to be upgraded at some point anyway. So you may as well upgrade them first and reap the benefits as you build your account. 
Now moving on to the research building, as you can see, the research speed bonus increases as the level of the building increases. So once again, upgrading this first will make a huge difference over the progression of your account in regards to the research speed of technologies. In this next tip, let's talk about research priority. So there's two types of research. There's econ um, economy technology and military technology. In all these type of games, it's usually best practice to start in economy tech. There is an exception to that, and that is conscription. Conscription gives you an additional 10% training speed, and in the second one, it gives you up to an additional 10% training speed. Since training troops is so important, having an extra 20% boost on training speed equates to a huge difference over the progression of your account. It's also worth mentioning that the first five technologies on both the military tree and the economy tree can be acquired through visiting camps which are discoverable on the map. Once you've found these camps, all you have to do is select them and then you'll get the choice between two different technologies. Just choose the one you want and it'll be instantly researched for you. On the economy tree, what you want to work towards first is architecture one, which gives you a build speed increase of up to 15%. Now this you can acquire through the camps, which I showed you earlier. After that, I would then move on to scholarship one, which can give you an increase in research speed of up to 10%. After that, while you're waiting for your research building to upgrade, I would then come back and do stamina one to increase your max command point storage, and then also do breath control one which will increase your command point recovery speed now these are important so that you can attack more darklings the higher these are the more darklings you'll be able to grind and then the faster you'll be able to level up your commanders now on top of that there's a bunch of extra rewards you get from doing the darklings you can also come back and get military leadership as well which will increase your hero experience bonus by five percent after that i would then move up to architecture two which can further increase increase your build speed by up to 35% and then when you're a high enough level I would grab scholarships too which can increase your research speed by up to 15% while you're waiting for those I would have a look at getting stamina 2 which will further increase your command point storage and also breath control 2 which will also increase your command point recovery speed by up to 10% as for resource tech like gathering speed and production speed. On my main account, I don't really concentrate on that too much at the start. I do run two farm accounts, so all of the resource gathering and reproduction is handled on those accounts. My next tip is about command points. You should never let your command point bar fill up. Once it is full, you are no longer accumulating command points, which is not an efficient use of your time. Command points are used every time you attack Darklings on the map. To get the highest amount of rewards and fastest progression of your heroes, you want to be constantly using them. When I first jump on for the day, I use all my command points, which then gives me a recovery time of around 12 hours before my command point bar fills back up again. So I then jump on before those 12 hours are up and I use all my command points again. That way I'm always accumulating command points. Also, make sure you are using your dark keys daily. You can store a max of five of these with two being available each day through this event here. The way you use these is by finding the Darkling guards guarding the chest as shown and defeating them. If you are unable to defeat these on your own, you can use multiple legions or ask a friend from your alliance to help. Once they are defeated, it's just a matter of collecting the chest. These chests can be collected by multiple people in your alliance, only one time each, and they refresh every 15 minutes. These are some of the rewards that are available from the dark chest, so you can see that it is worth it. On top of that, you don't consume command points defeating them. When attacking Darklings, you should also attack a mixture of both Darkling Patrols and Dark Creatures. Darkling Patrols give a large amount of XP, so these are used to level up your heroes. They do not give you any Arcane Dust. 
Dark creatures give you a small amount of XP, but mainly reward Arcane Dust. Arcane Dust is used to upgrade your artifacts. Both Darkling Patrols and Dark Creatures of the same level give you the same amount of Prestige. Prestige is used to enact policies in the Notice Board, which I will go into shortly. When attacking Darklings with AoE heroes, be careful that lower level Darklings are not nearby. If you aggro a Darkling with your AoE, it will also consume command points. You really want to be attacking the highest level Darklings as possible to receive the maximum rewards. So wasting command points on lower level Darklings is going to give you less rewards. One thing I did want to mention is if you attack Darklings with multiples of your own legions, both of them will receive the same rewards. But if you attack them with your friend or another player's legions on the map, the XP will be split between the two of you. I'm not sure if that's going to be like that for global launch, but thought it was worth highlighting. So for now, it's best to attack on your own. No help from friends. Next tip is about enacting the right policies. Policies can be located in the notice board building by pressing the chair icon after clicking it. To enact a policy, you need prestige. You can see the prestige here in the top, 213,000. Prestige can be acquired by defeating Darklings. The higher the level of the Darkling, the more prestige you will gain. For example, level 17 Darklings will give you 1,000 prestige. Level 19 will give you 1,440. If we move over here and find a level 22, you can see that the prestige you gain for that is 2,500. So you can see the importance of attacking Darklings that are of a higher level. As for enacting policies, I have concentrated on Military Expansion 1, Military Expansion 2, and now just starting to move on to a Military Expansion 3. The reason I've done this is because increasing your Legion size by 4, 5, or 600, especially at the start when you only have 3 or 4,000 in your Legion, that is an increase of 10 to 15%. That's 4, 5, or 600 more troops attacking, counter attacking, and causing skill damage, which will increase your damage output. So that's a much better investment at the start than these other policies, which give you half a percent extra damage or an extra 1% damage. Just one thing to keep in mind though, if you don't have the troops to fill up your legions after you've done the military expansion, there's no point in upgrading that policy. As you progress though, your legion sizes get bigger. For example, my legion size is now over 40,000 and to increase by 600 costs 25,400 prestige. So now going back and doing these other policies, which are much cheaper, 7,200 7, or 6,100 is a little bit more beneficial. Also now, this increase is only 1.5% to my current Legion size. So now is also a good time to go back and do War Studies 1 and War Studies 2 to increase the XP gained from defeating Darklings. As for medical policies, I have opted to focus more on resource healing as I believe that this will be much more beneficial in war when I need troops instantly. The next tip is on honorary membership, also known as VIP in other games. You really want to be striving to get to membership level 8. This is when you unlock your second research queue. This effectively is doubling the speed in which you can research technologies. Unlocking this early will give you a huge advantage building your account. Also at membership level 8, you start to receive one legendary hero token of your choice. I have chosen Madeline as she is not available from gold keys. Following from that, every week there are items you can buy in the membership shop. You should purchase all the items in there that can be bought with resources. These include command point recovery tokens, 5 minute speed ups, epic and legendary medals and more. Don't forget to come back every week as they reset every Monday 0 UTC. As you increase your membership level, more items will become available. Okay, the next tip is not to use any speed ups until you have received all your helps from your alliance. A help progresses time for free, so your speed ups will go a lot further if you wait to max out all your helps. You can see on the buildings and research I have going, they all have 24 of 24 helps. 
You can also see the amount of time I have saved by waiting for the helps. This really does add up over time, especially if you follow the tips regarding the Alliance Center upgrade at the start of this video. If you use your speed ups before you received all your helps, you are really just throwing them away. Following on from that, before you upgrade any of your troop training buildings or your research building, make sure you have enough speed ups to finish them straight after you receive all the helps for them. Every minute that these buildings are upgrading, they are not training troops or doing research. So you really are getting double the value from your speed ups when using them on these buildings. Another tip regarding troop training buildings, by leveling them up, you will also receive additional stat bonuses. Your infantry building will give you an additional half a percent of overall attack bonus when you get it to level 10 and up to 2% extra attack once you max it out. Your magic troop building will give you an additional half a percent of HP bonus at level 10 and up to 2% HP bonus once you max it out. The cavalry building further increases your attack bonus by the same amount in previous examples. The marksman building increases overall defense as does your flying units building. I normally upgrade these buildings while I'm waiting for my hall to upgrade when I do not have any required buildings to do. Next tip is to complete all events that the game offers. Events are basically giving extra rewards for tasks you should already be completing in the game. There is an event when you first start your account called Road to Glory, which goes for seven days. It's important that you try and do as many of these as possible for the extra rewards. Included in this event is an engineering hero called Craig. By completing the tasks, you unlock Craig tokens, which can be used to recruit him and upgrade his skills. Also included is gold keys and artifact keys. It's a good event to get you off to a good start. Also in our server, we have ready to fight event going and it is giving gold keys for training troops. 1600 troops is not a lot and this can be completed easily if you lower the troop tier for this. Alternatively, you could use speed ups for it. Also, we have Divine Depository going. This gives you treasure chests, which you can open for speed ups, resources, silver keys, and gold keys. You just have to collect resources in your city, gather resources, or defeat Darklings. So keep your eyes on the events tab as they become available and make sure you participate in them for free rewards. Another thing you want to do is make sure you are completing your daily, weekly, and seasonal challenges. If you complete six dailies, you receive a bunch of rewards, including an artifact key, sweet dew for increasing a hero's trust level, a 60 minute speed up, and some resources. Each challenge you complete gives you rune experience, which increases your rune level within Titan's Legacy. Each time your rune level goes up, you receive rewards. Another good way to receive free rewards for completing tasks you should already be completing. Next tip is regarding time management. Whenever you are going to leave the game for an extended period of time, for example, when you go to bed at night, make sure your troops, building upgrades and technology upgrades that you are completing have enough time left on them to last until you get back on. For example, let's say you have a technology researching and it has one hour left before it is finished. You are better off using speed ups to finish the hour and start a research that is going to be running the entire time you are away from the game. If you don't, the research will finish in an hour and then there will be five, six or seven hours being wasted doing no research. I have these troops here and they have 25 minutes left. Now if I'm about to go to bed, I'll just speed these guys up and then start a new batch straight away like so. Now I have just over six hours to be back again. Now it might not sound like much, but the average person sleeps around eight hours a day. By utilizing that time correctly, you can progress your account 20 or 30 percent faster. Now the last tip I want to give you is regarding resources. Gather, gather, gather and gather. If your legions are not fighting darklings, are not building or are not in war, they should be gathering. Resources are so important, they are needed in every aspect of the game. I also suggest you create a farm account or even two to keep up with the resource demands. 
You can create a new character by selecting your avatar, going to settings, then character management, then tap create new character and select the server you are in to create the farm account there. If you want to have more than two characters in one server, you will need to create a new Google account to start a farm there. Personally, I run two farm accounts on different Google accounts, so I can play them at the same time on my PC. It takes a bit of setting up, but I think it's definitely worth it. The best faction for farm accounts at the moment is League of Order for the additional 10% gathering speed. If you made it this far, you are well on your way to more effectively progressing your account. Please like and subscribe, and if you have any other tips to add, leave it in the comments section. Thanks for watching.